Welcome back to Left, Right and Centre after Chandrayaan which continues to do brilliantly on the surface of the moon with the Pragyan rover taking pictures of the Vikram lander. It's time to focus on the next big launch that comes up on Saturday morning with the Aditya mission set to blast off. What is the Aditya mission? Why is the sun ISRO's big focus? There is a chance and this is why we are discussing this for some really exciting science. And we'll be sharing all of those details but remember Saturday morning before uh, at about 11 or a little after that is when the PSLV rocket with Aditya blasts off. So, some details. The moon done, now the sun. What is Aditya L1? It is India's first mission to the sun. It's a 400 crore rupee project for a 1500 kilogram robotic satellite to study the sun. Uh, Aditya will look out for solar storms and solar flares. It will study the sun from a distance of 1.5 million kilometers it will be placed in the sun's halo orbit at uh, Lagrange point L1. So L1 actually stands for Lagrange point uh, and we will talk about what that means. Aditya will delve deeper into less studied solar science. It will observe the sun's photosphere, the chromosphere and the corona. It will study how the sun's coronal heating works. It will identify how solar eruptive events happen. It will study solar wind space weather. Well, joining us now Narendra Bhandari, the space scientist and Dipankar Banerjee, uh, the director of the Aryabhatta Research Institute of Observational Scientists. Um, I think uh, Mr. Banerjee, what is first up, what is interesting is that it's not just a satellite, uh, it's a, it's a full-fledged space facility uh, which is actually doing a lot more than just what a satellite does. It is an observatory class uh, a vehicle, isn't that right? So it's a big difference. That's absolutely right. So it's a called the observatory class mission. So we have observatory in the ground and for 100 years we have been looking at the sun from different observatories uh, in India, namely the Kodaikanal Observatory or the Udaipur Solar Observatory or say Aryabhatta Research Institute at Nainital. But this is a grand opportunity for the Indian uh, solar community. First time we are able to go to space. And normally, you know, the space agencies uh, try out with a small satellite program and near Earth, uh, you know, missions. But we are so lucky that ISRO has given us this huge opportunity to go to Lagrange One Point. And as you mentioned, Lagrange One Point is 1.5 mil million kilometer away from the Earth. And it is a perfect vantage point to look at the sun continuously. So it allows us to, you know, really study uh, the sun for a longer period because once you reach Lagrange point, it is also expected that the satellite will leave much longer uh, because satellite needs only very little fuel to maintain its orbit around the Lagrange one point. So we'll be actually making a big halo orbit around this Lagrange one point and we'll be continuously looking at the sun and then this is a, again a huge opportunity from that space platform. We are going to look at the sun and we will have a combination of instruments. We call remote sensing and in situ. Remote sensing means we have certain telescopes will be remotely looking at the sun and will be recording the images and the particles which are coming from the sun and will sense and try to get an estimate about the temperature, about the pressure, of the density of the different layers in the solar atmosphere and study all these, you know, you mentioned these dynamic events which happens in the solar atmosphere, namely the solar flares or the huge ejecta which comes called coronal mass ejections. So these are these four, uh, you know, remote sensing instruments. Again, the interesting thing is we are going to have multi-wavelength suite of instruments. We have optical, we have infrared, we have near UV, we have X-ray. So that means you are able to probe different temperature layers of the atmosphere of the sun with this multi-wavelength remote sensing telescope. And in addition, we'll also have in-situ instruments. The particles, the mass which is coming from the sun, it is traveling through this interplanetary space. And eventually, it will come to near Earth. And the Earth uh, near environment is filled with now space assets. You know, we have plenty of satellites. Oh. We are now thinking of even in future go to the moon. 
So all these can be directly affected by the solar energetic particles. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to come back to you in just a moment. Go across to Pallav Bagla, who joins us at this stage. Pallav, let's start at the very beginning. The rocket itself. We are talking about the sun already. Tell us about the rocket first. Oh, we have a magnificent rocket which will take India's solar observatory to the point where it should. India is using the polar satellite launch vehicle, which is our workhorse rocket. It has an excellent record. And on Saturday, the launch should be good. And this is not a very heavy satellite. And that's why they are using a rocket which will take it as good as an orbit they want. And the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle has really done remarkably well in the past. If the satellite were heavier, they would have used the Launch Vehicle Mark III. But the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle will do its job well. It has to finally go and settle 1.5 million kilometers away. But that the satellite will do. Okay. Um, Mr. Bhandari, what is India trying to to do with the data that we collect over here what uh, are, we, are we looking for any con are, are we looking to um, sort of get data to approve certain theories or is this pure science you see sun is a very mysterious object it's a uh, sphere of gas and one would expect that it is all mixed up but that is not true it has a layered structure so we have a photosphere, we have chromosphere and corona. And one of the mysteries about it is that corona has a very high temperature, higher than the chromosphere. So how does it happen that we don't understand fully? There are some theories which uh, Aditya one will try to uh, prove. And how this uh, mass ejection, you know, they are so big, sometimes as big as the size of the earth. They come and engulf the whole earth they keep on moving in the interplanetary space. How they are produced, we don't understand about their origin. So, uh, these are the uh, main objectives to study chromosphere and corona and the mass ejections, how they take place, how they originate. And uh, this is all the play of, of plasma and the magnets. The uh, sun has a very high magnetic field. And that is what is playing a very important role. So we want to understand that. And uh, of course, uh, Aditya has uh, another objective to study uh, the plasma in the vicinity of the Earth. You know, 1.5 uh, million kilometers is not that far. Uh, sun is about uh, 150 million uh, kilometers away. So it is actually nearby. But what particles come as solar wind? You see, there are solar wind, there are solar flares, which come occasionally, and solar wind is continuously flowing in. Mm -hmm. A million particles per square centimeter per second. Every second, so many particles come. So, how do they come? How they change with the solar cycle? Uh, all this is a scientific study of great value. And with Aditya mission, we hope to resolve some of the problems and understand the uh, basic science uh, behind these phenomena, which are very mysterious. Professor Raju, um, you know, it's going to be quite complicated in terms of where we want to position uh, the, uh, the Aditya probe. Uh, it's going to be um, at the Lagrange point. That's what L1 stands for. For the benefit of our viewers, how do we get there? Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Song, for having me here. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, tremendous, uh, you know, orbital uh, dynamics have gone into this uh, decision of uh, the route. Uh, the ISRO um, has, uh, considering the, the rocket that's being used, and then the, uh, and then the uh, uh, mass it can lift off, uh, and it has come out with a, a fantastic uh, orbital uh, route, and it has been proven time and again successful. You know, we have seen from the Chandrayaan you know, 1, uh, 2, and 3, and of course the Mars mission. So uh, it all uh, boils down to the, the orbital dynamics and taking into account how we uh, get the spacecraft or the rocket out of the gravity of the Earth and in the right direction at the right time, and then see that uh, you know it, it gets captured in the 
next uh, you know planetary objects uh, gravity but in this case here uh, it's a very interesting uh, factor here in lagrange point there's no there's no one uh, you know unlike the moon or mars you know there is no orbit insertion here mm -hmm. so uh, you know uh, there has been uh, you know a, an interesting uh, uh, estimates and calculations have been made and again when we say lagrange point it's not a point per se it's it's a kind of uh, a, a region wherein uh, even once the satellite is placed there it will be kind of you know it's a halo orbit it will be just uh, you know orbiting in a in a, in a very uh, you know uh, circular fashion in that region so uh, it's 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 a tremendous exp uh, you know feat uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, mechanisms in terms of the calculations and putting it there at the l1 point okay pallav um has uh, the isro team been able to get enough sleep for the mission they've just got they're dealing with chandrayaan uh, and and and, and uh, pragyan the rover keeps sending back all sorts of data we getting all sorts of pictures we'll talk about that now but uh, i mean at the end of the day they've got a finite number of engineers and scientists at that level so they've got a lot of work this month right oh certainly it's relentless work for them uh, but fortunately see there are different teams which do it there is a satellite team which did the chandrayaan job because the rocket job was done many many weeks ago july 14 that got over since then the campaign for uh, the pslv launch for aditya started so there are different teams which do it but yes there are some uh, uh, overlaps and uh, like you many people in isro have probably not slept for a long time it's <laughs> relentless work uh, vishnu and and the pragyan rover and the uh, vikram lander keep us busy throughout the day and night because pragyan and uh, uh, vikram don't have sleep they don't sleep it's 20, 14 days of continuous light and now after the moon embrace it is going to be like you said rightly a sun dance so moon walk to sun dance and all happening within days and 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 let's not forget the significance of this uh the moon mission happened when the prime minister was at brics just a few days ahead of the g20 india is attempting the sending the solar observatory and i'm sure it's going to play out on the minds of the 40 plus leaders who turn up in new delhi so these are very significant uh, uh, milestones sure. in india's journey and all heading towards a uh, developed nation soon no interesting uh, dipankar banerji um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the pragyan rover which has now gone and discovered sulfur on uh, underneath the uh, the lunar surface and not just that many other chemicals as well uh, we've got a graph uh, a graphic in fact which we can play off that so we'll do that but just uh, what is the significance of the discovery of sulfur yeah so people are looking at uh, you know all uh, unknown elements uh, and they're uh, so this was not probably anticipated earlier that we would be even seeing uh, sulfur so this particular uh, instrument which is this uh, laser uh, laser induced uh, spectroscopy instrument which uh, you know bombards uh, some laser into uh, certain soil and then gets the reflected uh, emission uh, from that to get a uh, feel about the composition of this so i think uh, and that too particularly in the as you know in the polar region uh, this has not been tested before so the the chemical composition of the polar uh, region and it's a new uh, element identification different ionization states different temperature sensitivities all these are going to give a completely new picture and of course you know the final uh, aim is to look for uh, you know uh, water so in a way all these composition identification new element identification will be quite crucial in the subsequent studies so as you have projected here yes. this is the spectrum and then in the spectrum you see all these different elements uh, which comes into the camera essentially there is a ccd camera which is used for uh, you know all imaging so here it is a spectra which is imaged from the reflected laser uh, you know beam and uh, these particular elements are identified from those uh, you know reflected light from those areas so it's quite significant because we are for the first time getting new compositional you know uh, history 
bring that graph back up, have it up full screen, and uh, let's get uh, Professor Raju to talk us through this. Uh, Professor, what are the, the various uh, elements that we are able to find or substances we are able to, uh, minerals we are able to find in the surface of, of the moon? And what exactly are we looking at it over here uh, from this sensor? Uh, well, um, there are um, uh, what what it is uh, showing is the is the kind of you know again I should say that this is a, a tweet that has come from ISRO. So uh, you are what uh, the, whatever you are seeing is that's the information I have. I don't have much further on this, but the way uh, this works is you know the laser light is sent out and then the uh, and different elements have different uh, you know transition different uh, you know. Uh, uh, ways in which the photons fall from one, uh, you know, uh, energy state to another, and that's how you get the uh, spectrum out of it. And uh, uh, and in the similar fashion, there is another uh, experiment uh, called the alpha particle X-ray spectrometer uh, that also, you know, it does it uh, this in a different uh, fashion uh, with uh, and, and there also, you know, there are a lot of uh, element basically identify. It's a kind of fingerprinting in the sense that you know. In the atoms and molecules or elements, they have uh, they have a particular uh, uh, energy levels, and you can really pinpoint that that is that's it. But yeah. then the uh, issue is that in terms of there are uh, multiple you know, in terms of uh, compounds, there could be overlap of the lines. So sure. that's why you know crucial analysis. I think this is I uh, believe this is a first. No, absolutely, it's a lot of ana key analysis uh, will uh, shown by the. Yeah. By the, by we the, need to go into that. I'm only interrupting you now because I'm running short on time on this program. Uh, and I thought it would be interesting to actually end this program with a look at what, in the words of our foreign minister, several international leaders and countries are saying uh, with regard to, to Chandrayaan. Let's take a look and wrap up this program. We'll be back tomorrow.